as far as the mayor is concerned, I think that Bill de Blasio um, had the right to speak to his child, who's biracial, right. about um, what goes on in the city of New York. That's what a father is supposed to do. Of course. Now, that people are objecting to his parenting, that's separate and apart from what his policies and procedures are mm -hmm. that affect the city of New York. So okay. all of that is to say that, look, we, we if we don't do better, we're in serious trouble right. in this city. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you, you hit on a key word. The key word that you hit on for me was trust. And the bottom line is growing up, I mean, I'm a 70s baby. Mm -hmm. Proud of it. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm an 80s baby. Okay. <laughs> I'm with Norman. <laughs> well, <laughs> my man. <laughs> All right, well, I'm a 65 baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I'm just saying, <laughs> the fact that I remember, like you said, it's kind of alien. It's when you look at a police officer or what have you. I remember having to grow up with a certain amount of respect for the authority. Mm -hmm. Now that when you read on the the car, it says that we are here to, to um what, what is it says protect, protect and serve. Yes, it yes. says it on the vehicle. Yes. yes, but the way it is set up, there is nobody. Well, not let me just be correct. There is a percentage of people at this point in time who don't even believe in that, so they won't even go to a cop if they have a problem. Absolutely. Uh, I think what Norman said, you hit it on the head about the mix, because, again, if you take anything, whether that's sports or business, if I can't relate to you, then I can't understand your struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of people out here who are not racist but just don't have a clue. Right. So when these things happen, they only draw to the only, the only conclusion they have is what's in their base. Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, the police officers walked around, blue shirt, stick, you know, revolver. Mm -hmm. They were neighborhood cops. They walked the beat. You knew them. When let's go to school, you knew the cops, your officer. We lost that communication within community. Absolutely. Just like the communities where, you know, when we talk about uh, the, the, the meat market and, and the, the fruit stand, that's no more. The, the local drugstore. Right. The police situation is only an evolution of what's going on in our communities. Like where the Walmart comes in, takes away all the neighborhood businesses. So when the cops, police situation goes out and mass um, um, recruiting or daily, week, weekly recruiting now, mm -hmm. you're getting different people from different angles. And I think that's obviously made a good point there, Mr. Seabrook, about binding that in, making that a, re a requirement that, hey, if I'm in this community, I need to know at least how this community feels, how they think, what they like, what they don't like, because just imagery alone can make you af afraid. I Absolutely. heard Mark Cuban once said, Mark Cuban, um, the Dallas Mavericks owner, who obviously works for a lot of black people, a basketball <laughs> owner, pretty much said if I saw one of my players, if I didn't know him with a hoodie on, I would cross the street. Yes, he did. And it doesn't necessarily make him a racist, it just needs that we need more understanding. You know, funny you should talk about how our community perceives us, is that in, in our communities that we <coughs> live in, we continue these days to pull down the shade instead of pulling up the shade. Back right. in the days, our mothers, all right, and I am a, I'm a 60s baby. So back in the days, our mothers would chastise you, right. and you weren't even her child. Right. We have gotten so far away from being able to communicate with our own children that we're afraid of them. Right. We're afraid of them. We turn up the radio when we hear gunshots, and we, turn, we pull down the shade as opposed to saying, you can't do that in, in the community. And you can't expect police officers to come to your community and respect your community when you don't respect your own community. Thank you. Right. Thank because you. then they think that that's the norm. Thank right. So we've exactly. got to do something just a little bit different. Right. We've got to get back to basics. We've got to get back to stop worrying so much about trying to be my child's friend and be my child's mm -hmm. parent. Absolutely. Exactly. Excellent, excellent well. point I to honestly make. think that a, a lot of that, our community suffers a lot because our community no longer has a respected hierarchy. Mm. You know, when I'm a, I'm a 70s baby, we had a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. My grandmother mm -hmm. was 25 years older than my mother. My grandmother's mother was 30 years older mm -hmm. than her. You knew who Big Mama was. You did not reference Big Mama like I would reference Shantae. Mm -hmm. You understood the hierarchy. You understood that there was respect. And I think, no, no disrespect to single moms or teen moms, but the truth of the matter is, is that when you eliminated the age gap, you eliminated the ability for children to look at the next one up and say, 
you're an elder. How are you really an elder if you're 12 years older than me? Right. Exactly. I got friends. I got uh-huh. friends that are 12 years older than me. Absolutely. So I don't speak to them like with a level of reverence that you're expecting. And then I think because so many of those young parents, mothers and fathers, don't are still children and don't know how to interact with adults as adult. Mm-hmm. They interact with their children as, as children. So therefore, children don't see their parents as a parent. They see their parent as a, as a friend. God, help me as a child if I ever called my oh, yeah. mother May. Oh, yeah. Hey, May, what's good? <laughs> this it. side of my face would have been swollen. <laughs> this side would have been shut. Yeah. So I, I think that a, a, lot of, a, a lot of our problems stem from our community lacking a hierarchy that everyone steadily understood. Like Kadon said, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, Mr. Seabrook said, let's No, I just came, Norman, brother. Just Norman. As Norman said, you know, I came up in a time where if you got caught wrong, my neighbor slapped the hell out of me exactly. and then told my mother exactly. that I, I slapped, slapped the, the shit hell out of, out of him. No. And, and I got, got slapped, slapped twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got slapped <laughs> yeah. once because I did wrong, and I got slapped twice because I embarrassed her, mm-hmm. and the neighbor had to put a hand on me. <laughs> and we, yeah, we're true. missing that. That's a key component that we're missing Absolutely. in our community. When you when you eliminate that peg out of, out of our community's Jenga, you eliminate the community raising a child. Mm-hmm. But then when we grew up, wasn't it? We had the PAL, we had the boys club, yes, 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 we had yes. the boys and girls club, we had Kips Bay, we had all of these different Elms avenues Court, church for group. us church yeah. groups. Mm-hmm. The church closes their gates now, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's true. After that's true. the preacher get his money, you that's know, true. Yeah, everybody else <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> The yeah. gates gets closed. They don't even sell food like they used to at the church. No, except for Crayflow Dollar. Now, if you go to Crayflow Dollar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cray, no, He's first, open they, they, all day. They got 24. an ATM machine. They got a credit union. <laughs> and, and, and Reverend, and what's his name? Reverend Flack in Queens. They got, a, they got their own They got their own Flake. Flake, 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 Flake owns about 14 yeah. blocks in Queens yeah. with a credit union. The only church I know, and, and I'm not mad at it because I'm a capitalist. So I understand. You know, but one thing I think we, that we should touch on also is two things. Number one, I'm going to say the word pride. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, that, that embarrassed slap from yeah, your mama slap. was the worst slap you ever got because you got to forget. And this is what I tell my own daughter. Your last name is Sterling. You come from Sterling. Mm. When you put your name on that piece of paper, that's all that educator know you as, as right. your name. Right. They don't know your emotions. They don't know how you feel. They know what kind of grades you hand in. So it's up to you as a young lady to show them who you are. But remember, they're going to know your name, and your name come from your daddy. Absolutely. And from my daddy. and from his, It ain't your name, really. <laughs> so you have to take that and have pride. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, what we do, and I think that's for anybody, pride. But one of the things I want to touch on when it goes back to law enforcement is, have you ever noticed in this generation, this is the most unpopular job in the world is to be <laughs> in law enforcement. It's not a popular job. That's why everybody puts on three, four different kind of shirts when they go to work. <laughs> they throw on different kind of they bring four different. You don't. You'd rather say you work at McDonald's exactly. than say you're a cop. You rather say you pump gas mm-hmm. than say that you're a correction officer. And that's what's the difference. I remember, you know, when I was coming up, like we always said, you used to see cops going to work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, even when you're in the academy, you see right. them how they be trying to hide. Everybody Absolutely. know that yeah. little bag. The bag with the stick. They know the damn bag. Oh, what yeah. I, we, know, we know you in the academy, uh-huh. but you see they walk fast as hell trying to make sure you don't, <laughs> hey, man, so you what week you in? No, nah, nah, I'm not working now. I'm going for sanitation. But they, see, that's the thing. And I was talking to actually someone today about this. You know, we talk about how, you know, the police department is doing, you know, the black community wrong. But then we want, we want, we want our, black, our black people, our Latino people to get involved in the police department. But when they do, they look, the pound, they look down upon, they're frowned upon. You're walking hey, hold in. on, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead, because y'all, y- y'all might go somewhere else. No, and I don't want to lose I'm just going to say, when I... you're walking into an organization like this, you're talking about a paramilitary organization. Mm-hmm. When you're walking into that, you are walking into a hundreds and hundreds of years of old boydism. Mm-hmm. You're not walking into their training academy trying to change the mentality of the captain right. who already been down for 20-something years, of the lieutenant and the sergeants who already put their time in. Mm. They true, are going true, to true, embed true. it in your brain. Now that you got that shirt on, you are one of us. Right. And it's either you is or right. you ain't. You're either with us or against us. But that's, that's just you're so like in the, in, the, in the locker room, I believe, that there's bullies in the, in the locker room. Correction department, police department, fire, doesn't matter. That person stands in the locker room who has the most seniority and says, you do as I tell you to do, 
or you don't survive while mm -hmm. you're here. Mm -hmm. And that person succumbs to whatever it is that the agenda has been set for. And I'm not here to, so to talk about the police department. You know, I, I, I speak about the correction department, mm -hmm. but the correction department is mostly black and Hispanic. The police department is more than 50% minority right now. Mm -hmm. But we've got to get out of the mentality of believing that we have to go along to get along and we need to stand up for something. Because if we right. don't stand up for something, right. Right. we are subjecting to destroying our right. own community. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said something that sticks with me every day. Silence is betrayal. Mm -hmm. And if you don't stand up and say something of an injustice that you see, you are just as guilty as the person Absolutely. that's committing that yes. injustice. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. DWI. I, I, I had several points, but I'm going to go to what, what's most relevant now. Me coming up in a neighborhood that I had, from, from what I've seen the, the, the guys on, on the block do, from, and from me being a part of it but not being in it, it was still a, a good amount of respect for when certain cops came around that, all right, when he, come, when he comes around, you know, we got to get off the block. Right. If he's, if they'll come and say, and it won't be the, just a regular, you know, blue and whites come and say, get off the block. It'll be certain ones that we, we're very familiar with. We, get, we know their name. We know their, their street name. Yeah. And, and they, got a lot of, they, you know, they got a lot of respect. And that, that's the era that I come from. Right now, these, these young guys don't have no clue of who is who and what is what. They just know, all right, I'm not snitching. I'm not telling. A baby just got shot. I don't know nothing. I'm not telling who did it. And that, that's, that, the problem that I have with it is I'll give up. We'll, we'll, we'll give up. Let, as a community, let's give up the, 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 the rotten apples that we got. The police department, you give up your bad guys. Let's, let's, let's give it in because they, they, they messing it up for everybody. And it's about lives at the end of the day. Let's I share it. You're I, absolutely I'm I sorry. I think that bro. we're in a position where, and, and, and I'm going I'm to jump over to the other side of the sidewalk. I think that Kadan, Kadan nailed it on the head. Police, corrections, this organization dealing with civilians. And a lot of times what gets lost is you're asking a paramilitary organization to have a civil servant perspective when if you go to war, you don't ask people in the middle of a war to stop and converse and understand the enemy. Mm. I'm not saying that the civilians in our communities are enemies, but when you're dealing with a paramilitary structure and you're dealing with the needs of people Sometimes that becomes a hard dichotomy to cross when you consider, as a paramedic, at 17 years as a paramedic, I have one objective. And there are people who disagree with my objective. But I only have one objective. My one objective is to go home at the end of the night. My objective is to make sure the person sitting next to me goes home at the end of the night. Because chances are, if they don't go home at the end of the night, I don't go home at the end of the night. So there's a part of me that says, I'm going home at all costs. But then there's another part of me that says, well, when I roll up in these projects and, 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 and shot Kim and them, got, got 27 stab wounds in the chest and neck in some pissy hallway with no light. And y'all on through five bags of sand off the roof of this building at me on the way in. And I got two dudes in the elevator with guns waiting to rob me as soon as the door closes. It's hard to be a civil servant and care for people when the people ain't caring for me. So when you take people who are not from your community, who only have one objective is to take that 45 minute ride back out east into Suffolk, listen, they only here to collect the check. So you asking people to do something that's really becoming very hard to do. I'm not saying I agree, but what I'm saying is sometimes we have to give the opposite side a, a tad bit of space so that we can, un if somebody doesn't make an attempt to understand somebody, nobody's going to make an attempt to understand Two sides anybody. Every story. Right, let, me, let, let me say this. Rikers Island is the new, stomping uh, the new dumping ground in the city of New York. What do I mean by that? We got the mental health. Yes. We got the homeless. Yes. We got the guilty. Yes. And we sure as hell know we got the innocent yes. that gets released mm -hmm. 25 That's years later oh, yeah. back right. on the street. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that as, as men, and this is a conversation about men. Yes, right. sir. I think that it's important that we've got to try at least one, one young man at a time to step up our game and put this person under our wing because I know that's how I've learned to do let, things in my let life. Let me pose this question to you. 
for, and I, you know, not so much for the people that are here, but those that are watching this on the net, those that are, you know, check this out later. There's a city within a city. There's communities within communities. If you take, we'll use, for example, 1515, 1010, 55 Hazen, I've been to all of them. Rikers Island, the, 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 we'll use Rikers Island as an example, is a, com a city in and of itself. And corrections officers are the police of that community. What do you see that's used successfully in that community that would benefit the outside communities to use to improve relationships? Well, I think that one of the things is, is very important. I tell each correction officer this when they come on a job. Don't take on the identity of those you are paid to supervise. Yeah, right. You are not there to be their friend. I don't care if he lived down the block from you. There are many individuals that had dinner at my mother's table when I grew up in the South Bronx that are currently locked up. I got a brother doing 25 years to life, locked up right now. I love my brother. But at the end of the day, there has to be law and order in jails because we are the police inside Rikers Island. So to your question, I think what correction officers need to do and what I ask them to do and what I encourage them to do is try to do better. It's hard. It's not an easy job because we're out of sight, out of mind. Right. We're a minority organization. Don't nobody give a shit about us. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't have said that. No, no, no. All right. No, no, no that's you excellent. Good. You good. You, 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 you don't hey, even understand. All right. Fuck block, it. Block been holding it. Block been holding it in for about an hour already. You don't even You don't even understand. Block, I'm proud of you. They don't care. Right. So at the end of the day, I fight diligently to make sure that the men and women are respected. Do we have some bad guys? Yes. Do I think the bad guy should be wearing our shield and our uniform? Absolutely not. There is no place for you in this organization. Right. But at the end of the day, we have to do better in our communities because if we don't, I, and I still live in the Bronx. It, it's, I'm not even far from here on City Island. But at the end of the day, we are so engaged in worrying about what other people think of us mm -hmm. as opposed to what we think of ourselves. We are failing our children. We're failing ourselves. And people are sitting back in different places looking at us going, look at them. They don't know how to act. Right. Absolutely. Excellent. I definitely want to just Excellent. chime in, um, um, Norman, in 30 years Mr. in the Mr. Seabrook. Mr. No, Seabrook. <laughs> I actually prefer them to call me Mr. Sterling. They just don't do it. They don't do it. Yes, sir. I prefer the Mr. Sterling. This is a new year. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but I think it that. needs to be commended because you've been on the job. This makes 30 years coming this, this year. Being from the Bronx, being a black man from the Bronx. And, and again, I think a lot of the, the imagery that we put out or our, our youth sees is that they have, if they don't have a wicked jump shot, the old adder, you don't have a wicked jump shot, be selling crack rock. And to say a man that yourself, born and raised, still live in the Bronx. Not taking that trip west or mm -hmm. south, which you probably could, but you're home and this is where you're at. I think it should be commended because Absolutely. I think it's an image that nothing wrong with the athletes and the celebrities we talk about. But this is a real man working a real job to come walk the same streets. I think yes. I, I just want to no say Thank that. You, Absolutely. Because I, I hear how you, how you preach for your organization. I hear how you rock for you guys. I got family members that work for you. And I think that needs to be commended. When people do good jobs, we need to commend them and thank celebrate you. those people, people that we can actually touch and feel. So we thank you yes. and continue to do work thank for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Sterling? Absolutely. One, oh, one myself? Thing okay. Mr. Okay. Block, you, you, you have something to say? Yeah, I do. Actually, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lou well, Rawls. And Mr. Lou Rawls, thank you very much. <laughs> I think a lot of people want to know what exactly is done within the prison system to help keep, especially our youth. I want to talk about our youth and there are a lot of young people that are going into the prison system right now to keep them out of that situation because they go in and there's a, there's a whole culture that will keep them in that system. And we want to make sure when they come out that they don't go back in. Well, first, let me, let me, let me separate the two. Rikers Island is a jail system. Mm -hmm. It's not a prison. Prison is when you're sentenced right. and so you go upstate. Mm. Rikers Island is just a holding pen. It's like the sheriff's Absolutely. office. Absolutely. You sit there and you wait until a judge Ain't no Barney lets you go. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's Barney Fife in there sometimes <laughs> with the managers, not the officers. Though. And it, it's unfortunate because I've, I've been an advocate for change in the Department of Corrections. I think that these young men that are incarcerated 
should be taught how to be short order cooks. We yes. have huge mess halls. Right. I think they should be taught how to write a resume. I think they should be taught how to tie a tie, put mm -hmm. on a blazer, get their education, get a training. No one seems to understand that that's what's supposed to be done. So it falls on deaf ears to the last administration right. in the mayor's office, to the one before that, because we're out of sight, out of mind. So there is never going to be rehabilitation in the New York City Department of Correction mm. because it's money. Mm. This is, involves money. And as long as these young men and women keep coming back to jail, it's money for these people. Wow. So at the end of the day, you know, look, I wouldn't care if another kid came back to jail tomorrow. I'd be out of a job, but so what? We'd be a lot safer. Absolutely. They'd be a lot better off. But people have got to understand we've got to do something different. Right. Um, and and, and I, I just want to add this to it. When I was uh, chairman for the, for the MTA, I was uh, a chairman for the MTA, I asked them, I said, what do you do with the old buses and the old trains that you don't use anymore? Mm. They dump them. They get rid of them. I yeah. said, why aren't you training these kids? Yes. how to repair this yes. so that they can get the, the technical and the vocational yeah. skills that they yes. need so that they can go forward. Absolutely. They looked at me like I was Absolutely. crazy yeah. right? because yes. they don't want to teach these kids. Absolutely. Now, it, what, you, what you said is definitely true. It is money. Mm -hmm. it's and, and anything with anything in this system is about the money. It's about the dollar. Oh, yeah. I remember, you know, the mighty poet himself, Chris Rock, said, the money is in the medicine. <laughs> it ain't yeah. in the cure. Exactly. There's no money in the cure. Mm -hmm. The money will always be in the medicine. And it's the same mentality going into the, the prison system and the jail system or what have you. Me and, me and Mr. Norman Seabrook had a conversation. I already told him, me and him already know, I've been down in the system for 18 years. You know, but I do state corrections. I don't do city. Mm -hmm. Now, seeing it, like he said, there's a difference between Rikers Island than when you come upstate. I'm upstate. So when you, we get, when we were talking also briefly about the mental situation, the prison system now is full of OMH. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's mental hygiene. Yep. There's so many people that need help medically, and they'll throw a crime on top of it, whatever their situation is. And remember we talked earlier about the young lady that got killed in D.C. Right. Right. She needed help mentally. Right. She didn't deserve to get shot by the Secret Service. Cased but and shot policies as they may, they was doing their job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they would have just brought her to the side, she would have went to jail, mm -hmm. they would have evaluated her, they'd have put her in an OMH, she would have got a whole bunch of medicine that made her a little slow or made her happy, whatever. Right. But that's what it's consistent of now. And right. that's really what it's been really, um, people don't really know from the outside looking in how badly or how much it really is. Absolutely. You right. know what I'm saying? And then they'll try. They'll definitely try and throw a couple of programs. But the programs are kiddie programs. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to really help you when you come out of there. I've seen people, and this is the truth, man. This is from what I've seen. I've seen people do 25 years. I've seen people do 20 years, 22, 23 years, scared to go home mm. because they're not prepared yeah. to go home because now they have succumbed to this right here. They've been institutionalized. Completely. You right. You know? And well, I've worked with men and women, social, so yeah. We're dealing with social media right now. You got young people that don't even know how to talk to each other right. without oh, holding yeah. an iPhone in right. their hand. Right. Right. They can't even have a conversation mm -hmm. without taking out the iPhone to ask the question. Right. So we've got to, I, I, and I don't, I don't blame them for it. I blame parenting for it right. because somewhere, somehow, we, we, we dropped the ball we lost on these way. young That's people, yeah. Yeah. and we got to get it back, and it's unfortunate. Let me, let me put this question to the room. I mean, we, we, we've obviously broached, you know, some, some we've dug deep, but considering that, you know, Norman is a friend of the mentality show, let's step away a little bit from, from corrections. If Norman Seabrook was not the distinguished gentleman who he is today, with, co with, uh, with, with, with the Benevolent Association for Corrections Officers, what would Norman Seabrook be? I got you. He have been in Chicago with me last night. There it is. There it is. Don't worry <laughs> about it, Norman. I got you. <laughs> My man. We not answering that. <laughs> Next question. I'm going to hold that. That's how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not running for office anymore, right? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. Honestly, um... When I grew up in the South Bronx and lived in East Harlem, dope was $2 a bag when I was on the streets. Mm. Mm. I chose 
not to look. Let me let me back up a second. Yeah, because you went back. Yeah, because it was really <laughs> me, five dollars by the time I came up. Two dollars was a steal. <laughs> let me let me say this. Who was your plug? He I would say it's the sixties, baby. I would I would I would be I would be I would be wrong. I'd be disingenuous <laughs> if I sat here and lied to you. Mm. Some people got caught and I didn't. Mm. Okay, there it is. I'm keeping it real with you. Yeah. Absolutely. At the end of the day, Absolutely. I was Absolutely. on the streets Absolutely. with loose joints and nickel bags mm. like everybody else was out Trade there. Trade bags. But yeah, there, was, there was a time in my life where I had to change my course. Right. And that's because of my mother. My father wasn't there with me and that did he didn't make me the man that I am. Mm. He had another family. He did his thing. He didn't give a shit about us, and we made it. So at the end of the day, you know, I give him credit for making me, you know, and my mom. My mother turned 83 years old uh, last year. Absolutely. I went to see her for New Year's. I spent New Year's with her in North Carolina, flew back to New York. But God is good to me. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we did what we had to do, oh, yeah. and it is what it is. Sir. So I'm not going to sit there and lie to you. Man. Isn't it something, though, though? Isn't it? Because we're about to go to the break in a minute. Isn't it something when you go through the system and you see somebody that you know very well, matter of fact, you know too well, and they look at you and go, you can't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, they used to rob you. <laughs> no, no, because they I used to take your I, lunch I, money. I, no, because I'm just saying, I remember going through the academy. That's all I'm gonna say. And I remember one of my partners looking at me, <laughs> but <laughs> he was, but he was up in um, he was way, way, way up. He mm. was way up, at, way, way up. And he was looking at me, going, "How in the hell did you make it? Did you get that job?" <laughs> yep. He was with me. Somebody cared about us. <laughs> but at the Somebody same time, like he said, I, the same time, like he said, I remember, mm. I had a time. I had a time, man, when mm -hmm. I had a mentor that, like I just told, told Shante too, he wasn't meant to be a mentor. He didn't know he was mentoring me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was being mentored. Mm -hmm. I was still going to work with Apache. I need a gangster bitch on my, on my boot. Yeah. And I had a government job. <laughs> but for some reason, I was just so angry, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't know that life, how good I really had it. Right. I was just angry right. Right. until somebody really pulled me to the side and gave me some words of wisdom from a man's point of view. Each one to you know? each one. Yeah. Right. Now, like I said before, my mother did correction for 20 years. I love my mother to death, was completely scared of her and completely scared of her. And when she called right now, I know I need to answer the phone. Exactly. Because <laughs> she, she there's something about correction officers. They don't just leave it when they leave it at work. <laughs> Yes, we do, man. And that, whoa. Real quick, I know, we got, I know we have to go. <laughs> now, I know I had the honor and the, and the pleasure of, of covering the, the Millions March that happened a few weeks ago. And, you know, I've I seen a lot of young people, and I've seen a lot of our people. I've seen everyone. I've seen everyone of every race out there marching for, you know, the cause that we were marching for. How does that make you feel to see us standing up for, I know you said, you know, we need to stand up. How does that make you feel now to see us standing up as they did in the 60s and as they did? I'm proud, man. I'm, I'm proud as a, as, a, as a man, as a black man, as a man that has two daughters, two wonderful daughters and a wonderful wife. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud to say that we're going to make a difference and we're going to make a change. If we don't make a change, then shame on us. Right. At the end of the day, look, let, let me say this. I'm proud of you brothers for what y'all doing. Because Thank at you. the end of the day, y'all should be applauded because yeah. not everybody's going to give you the opportunity to be on CNN or anything mm. else. Right. So you're bringing it to the people live and you're bringing it to them raw. Yeah. It's not edited. Mm -hmm. It's it's just raw. And mm -hmm. that's the way it's supposed to Absolutely. be. Thank so you. I think that what y'all are doing deserves more than just what you're getting. And, and it's unfortunate that we're dealing in a society that, you know, people are going to say, well, you shouldn't do that. Right. You, know, you shouldn't get on that team. And that's that bullying thing that goes back to it that Absolutely. I'm just going to be punked. I ain't punked by nobody. Yes. At the end of the day, stand up for what you believe in or step aside mm -hmm. and Absolutely. let us do yes. what we got to do. Right. Because at the end of the day, we got to make a change. We're right. about to go into a, a break right here. Don't forget where you're at. You're right here with the Mentality Show. We're going to come right back. We got some more topics we're going to go over to. My man Kev.